Hello, brilliant entrepreneur. It's Tash Corbin here and welcome to another episode of the Heart Centered Business Podcast. This is episode number 333, which means you can find all the relevant links and show notes for today's episode over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 333. In today's episode, I'm sharing with you my personal guide to goal setting. Now, it's always a good time to set goals, and I love setting goals throughout the year, but if you're listening to this as it drops, then you'll know that right now, Goals are a pretty hot topic. And so I wanted to let you know and share with you what my key principles and guiding uh, strategies are when it comes to goal setting. So if you still aren't 100% sure of your goals, your goals aren't exciting you, or you're worried that you haven't set goals in a way that's going to help you, this is going to be a really helpful episode. Let's dive in. I'm Tash Corbin, and this is the Heart Centered Business Podcast. Before I give you all of my tips and tricks to goal setting and share with you Tash's guide to setting goals, I want us to be clear and have a little conversation about what is the number one job of having a goal. Because we know that goal setting is good, and we know that you know knowing what our goals are can really help us to achieve them. But what is its principal job? And have you even really thought about what a goal's job is? Because before I started a business, I thought that setting goals was good at giving me direction. So if I had a clear goal, then that was the direction that I was aiming for. But since having a business and having set goals hundreds of times throughout the last 10 years, I have grown more and more to realize that the most powerful goals for me are the ones that create expansion. And that's actually different to direction. Expansive goals are powerful goals. Goals that even just setting them, they expand your capacity to achieve, to receive, to uh, move uh, closer to your goals, to affect people, to make change. When I think about the goals that have been the best for me, their job was not direction. That's my strategy. It tells me what I'm going to do. But the goals that really do an amazing job of helping me change my life, change other people's lives, of you know getting closer and closer to that dream lifestyle and those big dreams that I have are actually the ones that create a sense of expansion. So even just flipping that a little or getting clearer on what am I setting this goal for? Why am I setting a goal? What is its job? And realizing, well, that my job is of my goal is to create expansion. So therefore, I want to set a goal that feels expansive. Then for me, that makes the type of goals I set far different. And it also really helps me to narrow in on the goals that are going to be the most powerful. So I just want to plant that little seed before we go into my guide to goal setting, because sometimes we just set goals because we have to set goals. We set goals because we know it's a good thing to do. But the more that we're clear on its job, the more effectively it can do it. So do you want goals that direct you or do you want goals that expand you? I know which one feels way better for me. All right, so here are my top seven sexy, sexy little tips in my guide to goal setting. Number one, pay attention to your resistance and pay attention to your thoughts because your resistance to setting goals or setting certain types of goals or setting big goals is exactly the mindset fodder you need to uncover in order to be able to achieve those goals. It's almost like a little bit inception-y. Some people come to me and they say, I can't set um, big income goals because I don't hit them and then I get upset by that. And I'm like, well, that's your mindset piece, right? Is when I don't hit my goals, I get upset by them. Do you want that to be your reality or do you want to let that go? 
Do you want to spend your life avoiding goals because they might upset you? Or do you want to live in a world where setting goals expands you? Setting goals helps you achieve amazing things. I know which world I'd rather be in rather than just having a fixed mindset and accepting your fate as never being able to set goals or never being able to set stretch goals or having the personality type that works best with really achievable doable goals that aren't particularly exciting. Wouldn't you rather shift it? Wouldn't you rather live in a world where you set ginormous, scary goals and it takes you closer and closer to the life and business of your dreams? Wouldn't you rather have this excitement and expectation and anticipation when you set these giant goals? And if you don't get there, you can still see that the journey has been completely worthwhile and it doesn't derail you or send you off on a downward spiral if you don't hit your goals. I know which one I'd rather live in. So pay attention to the resistance, pay attention to those top pop up thoughts. And every single one of those pieces is your opportunity to say, well, is that what I want to believe? Or is that something I want to change? Is that a thought I want to hold on to? Or am I ready to let go of it? Because the choice is yours. Number two, aim bigger. My guide to goal setting is aim bigger. And I know for some people that feels really tricky because they've had experience where they've set big goals and they've got really excited about them, but they didn't achieve them and it created that negative downward spiral. But as I said with tip number one, I think that actually our job as online business owners, as entrepreneurs, is to become more and more comfortable with setting and not hitting our goals. Because uh, up until the end of 2021, I have never hit one of my 100 day income goals ever, ever. I've run 100 days of uh, progress art since 2015. And for six years, I never hit my goal. But over that six years, I've significantly increased my income. I've significantly scaled down the time that I invest in my business. I have helped thousands and thousands of people. Do I regret setting goals that I didn't hit? No, because those goals did their job. They expanded me. They were expansive. So for me, when I come across someone who is setting goals that feel safe, who doesn't want to push themselves too hard, who, you know, when it comes to goals, I'm not talking about doing the work, but I'm just talking about setting the goal. Like, There's no harm, as far as I'm concerned, of setting a goal that feels a little bit obnoxious. And in fact, if you do challenge yourself to aim a little bigger, perhaps you'll uncover more of that juicy mindset fodder and be able to clear some of the limiting beliefs and blocks that you have and expand your capacity to receive, expand your capacity to earn, to achieve, to grow. So I want to just plant that seed, aim bigger, aim bigger. I think that the times where I've been in masterminds, where I've been in like biz friendship groups and that kind of thing, and we have nudged each other to set bigger goals have been the times that those goals have got smashed and this amazing expansiveness happens. And I know that for myself as well. When I first aimed for a million dollar year in my business, it wasn't just the achieving the million dollar year that would have been the benefit of achieving it. I didn't hit it the first time I said it. I've not yet had a million dollar revenue year in my business. But the first time I set the goal to have a million dollar year, I started asking different questions. I started asking questions like, is the structure of my business able to support a million dollar revenue? Do I have the customer service capacity for million dollars worth of sales? Do I have the team support I need? Is this my million dollar team? And so the changes that I made as a result of that very big, very audacious goal were extremely beneficial beyond whether I hit the goal or not. Whether I hit the goal or not, I made changes to my team, the structure of my business, the systems and processes that I used. I And, and all of those things were for the better and set me up for what I hope in 2023 is my first actual million dollar revenue year. So as you can see that 
just by aiming bigger, that creates that sense of expansion. And part of the expansion is what the questions that you ask yourself and the decisions that you make are through the lens of being someone who is able to, and capable of achieving that big goal. It's so powerful. So number two, aim bigger. Number three, I do want to say that the earlier you are in your business journey, the looser your goals need to be. So when it comes to creating business growth and, and um, setting goals for your business, if you are in the early stages of business, you're still learning about who you want to serve, what your price points are going to be, your model of business, what works, what your conversion rates are. And so sometimes it's enough to just set a loose revenue goal and be open to the possibility of how you might get there and trying different strategies within it. So, you know, sometimes I see people they're in their very first stages of business and they're setting goals like, I'm going to have 15 VIP clients pay me $2,000. And the goal is so specific and so narrow that it doesn't allow enough flexibility to um, go with what you learn along the way. And the, the narrowness of the goal can sometimes be limiting. Remember, the goal is expansion rather than direction. And so the earlier you are in the business, the more I would recommend that you focus on just an expansive, loosey-goosey goal rather than being prescriptive about where that goal is going to be achieved or the specifics of that goal. I have goals nowadays of, for example, having conference tickets sell out because I know that I'm capable of selling out conference tickets. Um, we've never sold out conference tickets before, but um, that's a really expansive goal for me. And I can be specific about that because I have conferences set up. It's a proven entity. We've already sell sold almost 100 tickets. So, um, you know, that really helps to uh, give me that confidence and that clarity around a more specific goal. But the earlier in your business, the looser those goals ne need to be. You don't need to be quite so prescriptive. Tip number four is actually a motto or mantra that we adopt in the Heart Center Business Planning System and in our little planning posse. And when it comes to creating the plan on how you're going to achieve your goals, sometimes we can default to believing the bigger the goal, the busier I will need to be. The bigger the goal, the more things I need to do to achieve those goals. So our mantra inside the planning posse is big goals, tiny list, big goals, small list. So the, and when I say list, I mean to do list. This then starts to pop up and show you where you may have some thinking and beliefs around what's possible or whether that's actually doable. I get a lot of butt tashes, hashtag butt tashes, in the early stages of the planning posse each year where I talk about this big goal, small list. Because people are like, well, no, 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 I need a big list because I'm early in my business journey and I've got a lot to get done. Like, okay, but what if you could achieve your goal of 10K months without having a lot to get done? What if we could just do it a little bit easier and do it with a much more focused to-do list? It's like people, you can see people's face like, oh, I don't believe that's possible. They realize, oh, I've been telling myself that I have to work harder because I'm in startup. Or people might say because they have children or because um, they are a type A personality and they can do more, so they should do more. Or they love working hard. I've had people say that to me. I love my business so much. I'm willing to give it 60 hours a week. So I'm happy to have a big to-do list. I'm like, yeah, great. What if you didn't have to though? What are you telling yourself or how are you training your business? And what are you training it to expect from you and to need from you if you are setting out with the intention of this is a 60 hour a week business? I don't know. So it's just a little one to... Have a think about it, notice your resistance to it, and notice what your but is, right? But Tash, I need a big to-do list because 
Uh, people tell me I need a big to-do list because of ADHD and neurodiversity. Actually, research has shown the smaller the list that you have, the more likely you are to achieve it, especially if you are neurodiverse. Just saying. Uh, so I want to know what your reason is. Why can't you have big goals and a small to-do list? Why is that not possible for you? There's your mindset fodder, right? It's so powerful. This is why goal setting is so sexy because just the action of setting the goal itself uncovers so much that we have in our limiting beliefs, in our mindset, underneath that tell us what is and isn't possible for us. And we get to decide, do I want to keep these things or do I want to let them go? Now, tip number five is let's make the goal scary, but not terrifying and also not disconnecting. So sometimes I've set goals and they I've just blown it out of the water, right? I've gone, you know what? I'm just going to go double it and then double it. And most of the time it was when working with a mentor and I would say, you know, my goal is to have a 50K month. They're like, let's go for a 100K month. And three days in, I've realized it's so far away um, that I, it's got like, I've lost all connection to it. Um, and it's not just like scary and exciting. It's actually either completely terrifying or so far away that I've already decided it's not possible for me. And the level of work and change and the shift in my identity that's required for me to actually achieve that in a month's time is so big that it's just like, and I'm out check out. So when it comes to, you know, I did say aim bigger. When it comes to aiming bigger, let's aim for that scary, exciting, I'm not 100% sure, feels like it's just outside of comfortable, right? It's like, it's it's doable, but I'm not 100% sure how. It's, I don't know that I can get there, but if I did, wow, that would be amazing, right? So just pay attention to those thoughts. If it's so big that you're completely terrified and you shut down, or if it's so big that you completely disconnect and shut down, then it's not doing its job of expansion. So it's a great way to just check back in to see if the goal has been, like is in the right sort of field for you. Hope that makes sense. Number six, it's not always about hitting your goals. And I think you'll have picked this up all the way through this podcast episode. The power of setting goals is not just in simply achieving goals. And that's where I think a lot of people get into goal setting resistance because they don't understand or they're not conscious that setting goals and going for goals has so many other benefits they're just fixated on hitting that goal, particularly when it comes to money goals. It can be very easy to get fixated on that one thing of, am I going to hit it or not, hit it or not, hit it or not, and see how closed in that is. It's either win or fail. And unfortunately, if you put yourself into that position, then all of a sudden, whether you hit the goal or not is going to be responsible for how you feel. And it's going to dictate what you think about yourself and whether you feel good or not, or whether you're good, you are good or not, whether you're worthy or not, right? See how it all gets tied up and messy. Sometimes the fact that you set such an expansive goal and you moved towards it is enough. It doesn't, you don't need to hit the goal for the goal to have done its job. Just like when I first set a goal to have a million dollar revenue year, I made changes. I I uncovered a bunch of beliefs about what I needed to, how I need to change who I am as a person in order to be worthy of a million dollars. I need to uncover and clear and let all of that stuff go. And it was setting the goal that helped me to do that. So it's not always about hitting the goal. Hitting the goal is one benefit of setting the goal out of dozens and dozens of other benefits. And if the only benefit you're looking for from setting a goal is hitting the goal, then you're setting yourself up for either a big sense of disappointment or just putting your sense of worthiness and success into the hands of something that you have influence over, but no control over. You don't have control over how much money that you make in your business. You can influence it, 
But whether someone hands you their money or not is actually not in your hands. And so there are things we can do to increase the likelihood that that will happen and, you know, all of those things. But ultimately, you don't have control over it. And so you are externalizing the driver of how you feel on the inside. And I think that that's a dangerous thing to do. So when you know that the job of a goal is expansion, and you also know that the benefits of setting and achieving goals are multi-layered and multifaceted, then I feel like that allows us to experience all of those other benefits. It puts, it opens us up to seeing that this is a snowball. This is actually contributing to a greater um, picture, a bigger picture and a longer term growth. Um, and so if you don't hit your goal, it's not the end of the world. It's not going to completely derail you. It's not going to mean that you think that you're unworthy and you're not good enough and your business is not good enough and create that downward spiral. Now, the final tip that I have for you, tip number seven, is that there are different types of goals. There are goal outcomes like how much money you bring in your business, income, right? So that's the result, the outcome. You don't have control over outcome goals. You can influence them, but you can't control them. Same as the number of people on your mailing list. You can set a goal for the number of people on your mailing list, but you don't have direct control over whether that goal is achieved or not. You can only influence it by your actions. And so it's important to be clear on what different types of goals they are, because if you set all of your goals as outputs, which is what you create, what you have control of, like your goal is to create a, write a book. Your goal is to um, create a new and run a new webinar, right? Yep, you have complete control over that, which is great, but there's no connection to an outcome, right? So what is the point of running that webinar? Is it to get clients? Well, that's an outcome goal, right? The outcome is the result the output is what you do. So there's outputs, outcomes, inputs, right? So you might have a goal of how many hours a week that you work. I have a goal on that for this year. You might have a goal on how much you're willing to invest in ad spend. That's an input. How much am I willing to put into this? Um, and you may also have lifestyle goals. Um, you might have goals of um, wanting to go for a walk every single day, right? That's an output. It's something you're going to do. It's related to your lifestyle. So um, not all goals are created equal. And if you're creating a giant list of things to do, that's actually not setting goals. That's a to-do list. And remember, we want big goals, right? Big goals. And that specifically is related to outcomes, and small list of outputs, things you're going to create. Big goals, small list. So when it comes to looking at your goals and setting those goals, focus your big picture goals, your expansion goals on what you're going to achieve, what the outcome is, outcome rather than output, what you're going to do. Because who knows? You might have a gorgeous VIP client walk in the door and say, you know what? I know that you normally only sell your online course for a thousand dollars, but can I work with you one to one for a week for a hundred grand? And you take them on as a joyful, amazing client. You love working with them and you've hit your income goal for the year in a completely unexpected way. Does that mean that hundred grand doesn't count? Does that mean that it's somehow less than worthy or that there's something wrong with you? Like it's a hundred grand. Yeah. So I like to keep my goals very outcome orientated and then my strategy and what I'm going to do to achieve those goals. That's where the outputs go, right? So I have 10 key outputs each quarter and then my 10 things I'm going to do that are most likely to get me to my three outcomes, the goals that I want to achieve. And the three outcomes that I usually set are income level, list size and one health and well-being or lifestyle goal. So it might be hours of work or um, closing the rings on my Apple Watch or um, it might be something more related to you know how I feel or those sorts of things. So um, have, just 
make sure that you're not just setting a giant to-do list when you're setting goals. I see sometimes people have do like goal setting books or planners or that kind of thing. And it's a bunch of goals, but actually 99% of the goals that they set are just tasks. It's just things that they're going to do. And is that expansion or is that direction? And I think if we focus on goal setting as an expansive activity, it makes a big difference to how we feel about it, but also how effective it is and how powerful it is. And this is about setting powerful goals. All right, so they are my seven tips for you. And that is Tasha's Guide to Goal Setting, all in a nutshell. If you have any questions about that, of course, please do just slide on into my DMs. I'm always happy to have a conversation about it. But I also have a sexy little task for you for this podcast episode. I want you to come over to the pinned pod in the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs community. So if you come over to the group, we'll have the link to it with the show notes of today's episode as well. But if you come over to the Heart Centered group in the announcements, there'll be a pinned pod for episode number 333. And I want you to tell me what your big, powerful, expansive goal is. Um, We know that a goal shared is a goal magnified because if you tell me your goal and I take it on face value that you can achieve that goal and I believe in you achieving that goal, I'm also helping to send those ripples. If you believe in manifestation, law of attraction, those sort of things. When you share a goal, you actually create ripples for the achievement of that goal because We're bending time and space in your favor. And I have far more belief in you than you do in most cases. So you're borrowing other people's belief and you're using that to create that momentum. So a goal shared is a goal magnified. So come on over to the Heart Centered Soul Driven Entrepreneurs community and share your big, juicy, expansive goal in the comments of the pinned pod. And we'll all snowball each other's goals together. Because remember, a rising tide lifts all ships. And we're all going to achieve amazing things together in 2023. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Heart Center Business Podcast. Remember, all the show notes are over at tashcorbin.com forward slash 333. And until next time, I cannot wait to see you shine. Bye for now. Would you like more tips, tools, and resources to help you grow your heart-centered business? Head to tashcorbin.com today.